Hey everyone, welcome to another weekly live stream uh, uh, for Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Living Podcast. I almost forgot the words. I really don't have any words, but uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you go with the flow. Uh, so uh, today I have my special guest, uh, author, who's going to be talking about his inspiring story and message. And uh, let I'm just gonna welcome them in and let's just get started. And oh, and before uh, and before I welcome them in, uh, do, 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 do. you think I would figure this thing whole thing out? Um, if you need, if you want to follow me, interact with me on social media. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And there's all my handlers in the bottom, Jimmy Claire Speaker for Instagram and Facebook, and Jimmy Claire Speak on Twitter. And like I said, every single week, uh, you can watch this live stream on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Daily Motion. Uh, technically not Daily Motion yet. It, I used to have an integration. That's a long story for another time. And when this park when this episode goes on podcast you can listen to it on apple google spotify and everywhere on every single platform um and if and i always like to say to everyone who's listening if you don't if you can't find my podcast on a particular platform that you actually use send me a message i will set it up i will personally do it i'm that crazy oh, but the good crazy though and uh just to, if you want to follow Crazy Fitness Guy, it's on, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well, and so many other platforms. Just Google Crazy Fitness Guy. We're the only one that shows up. Uh, uh, just look past the Richard Simmons page. Uh, I outrank him. So um, that's all for today of, of that. And uh, sorry, Richard Simmons, there can only be one Crazy Fitness Guy here, and that would be me. So. Let's welcome Arthur out. Hey, Arthur. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm glad to be here today. I'm glad to have you. So uh, for people who uh, are just tuning in, uh, can you give us a little bit of um, a bio about who you are? All right. Well, my name is Arthur Aston. I am born and raised and still live in uh, New Jersey. And um, I was born with spina bifida back in 1981. So I will be 40 years old this year. Uh, that is something very special that I like to mention as often as possible because I was not expected to live past the age of 15. Uh, so what spina bifida is, it means that I was born with a hole in my back. I was born uh, my hole was in the lower part of my back, so it impacted my mobility. My leg muscles are very weak. I have to use leg braces uh, to walk and also crutches. And then I um, also use a wheelchair at times. But um, I uh, work as an executive director of a nonprofit called Build Jake's Place here in New Jersey, where we create inclusive uh, playgrounds. And um, also I own my own uh disability awareness and consultant company called Our View, which uh, we raise awareness, educate, and change the tone of conversation about disabilities. So I am. Uh, I started a podcast last year, which you were uh, a guest on earlier this year. So uh, thank you for that. And thank you for having me here today. You're totally welcome. And it's funny. It feels like our uh, interview felt like uh, it's been such a long time ago because of this whole pandemic, it, I, I kind of feel like I just lost track of time, but not really, but it just feels like, are we still in 2021? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It feels so drawn out. And uh, I can't believe I started my podcast back in June of 2020. So I can't even believe next year it'll, I mean, next month, it'll be a whole year that I've, I have been doing a podcast. So it's uh really seems like it's been uh, much longer than that. <laughs> and I started mine in uh, April, so it's like three months before you right. and, uh, of last year. And it's funny, it only, when I hit the year mark, I was like, wow, it's already been a year? I'm scared. 
And it's funny when I launched uh, the podcast on the same day that uh, Crazy Fitness Guy was founded on. I had two milestones uh, in April, so it was like I was turning. Uh, Crazy Fitness Guy turned four years old, and then my podcast turned one years old, and it's like I feel old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it does. It makes you feel. Uh, it does make you feel old. Actually, I, I can't believe a year has gone by uh, already for for me with my podcast next month. <laughs> Oh, well, you and me got to celebrate then when, when it turns one years old then. Definitely. Definitely. I'm planning, um, trying to plan like a big anniversary show of some kind. I don't know what that will look like just yet, but uh, that's my plan um, actually for this weekend and next week to figure out how, I, um, how I'll celebrate the uh, one year mark of my uh, first podcast episode. If you need any ideas, I can... Uh, 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 just uh, give you some. Thanks. I will. I will email you about that. <laughs> so, um, so uh, when the doctors told you you can't, uh, that you wouldn't be, uh, be, uh, you wouldn't live until, uh, you would only, um, you might not live until uh, up until age fifteen. How how did that make you feel? I don't. Um... They didn't tell me, they told my parents that. So um, I don't remember being aware of that as a child. Um, I just remember, um, you know, all the, the, I remember the, you know, the not so good times and the surgeries and things like that. But I, I definitely remember all of the good times and all of the fun that I had as a kid. So thankfully I, I didn't know that um at the time but ever since i i found that out as a um an older teenager when when my uh, parents did say that and made me aware of that i make sure that i celebrate every day and every year um you know as as a great accomplishment uh that i that i live past the age of 15 and like i said i can't believe i'll be 40 um in november celebrating with a uh big trip to uh, Disney World, actually. <laughs> hey, yeah, I like going to Disney World. I have been there like maybe three or four times. It's it's still fun, even when you're a grown up. Absolutely, and it, what really makes me feel even older is that I graduated high school in the year 2000, 21 years ago, and that was the last time I went to Disney. <laughs> so I Jeez. definitely owe myself this trip. <laughs> uh, you know, perhaps maybe we should go together. Might, might as well. I yes. Need a vacation. <laughs> yes. I'll let you know when we're going. <laughs> I need a vacation right now. Yes. Yeah, we all finished, do. I just finished a school semester and my final yesterday. And I, I was just like, uh, I'm so glad the semester is over. I'm burnt out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember college days and the... Uh, semester would be very um very taxing and very draining by the end of uh by the end of the, the semester in early may it was uh time for a break time for a vacation <laughs> well you know uh like for me uh i don't know if i told you this but the reason why i started doing this whole uh live streaming thing was because if I did one more Zoom recording, and I don't mind being a guest on someone else's podcast who uses Zoom, <laughs> but if 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 I did one more Zoom recording on my end, I was gonna go super crazy off the wall. <laughs> oh my gosh! I definitely agree with you. I use Zoom for my podcast, and um, I figured out a good schedule where I'm not burned out from being. Um, from being on Zoom and on camera too much. So I, I record in two week batches. So I use the last two weeks of the month to record a marathon of recordings. Sometimes I was doing 10 or 15 recordings in a week, um, but then I, I give it a break. And uh, yeah, cause it's, I, I'm kind of uncomfortable talking actually, which is very surprising being that I host a podcast. Um, so it's, it's really, uh, I'm really putting you in the spotlight. Yes, yes, you are. So I, I really, uh, I appreciate this though, because it really, it really does take me out of my comfort zone, especially doing something live. So, 
It's fun though. I'm excited. Hey, trust me. The, the first few times when I was doing live, uh, I, I was all over the place. It was a total mess. I actually got down to, I got kind of down to a science now. Uh, don't even ask how, but. <laughs> well, that, that's what I found with the podcast. So with my podcast, I um, primarily, I uh, interview people. I interview uh, other people who have disabilities, um, whether they be um, physical, um, mental health diagnosis or um, learning disabilities or any type of disability you may have. I, um, I interview uh, people. So really I'm not uh, doing most of the talking. So I, I guess it's the being the person that's interviewed that it makes me a little bit more uh, out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I don't mind asking the questions. It's the uh, answering of the questions that are really um, you know, the, the uncomfortable part for me. But as you said, as you do it more often, you know, you get into, you get into a rhythm and you, you figure it out and figure out how to, uh, how to make it work and make it less uncomfortable. So I, uh, really, I'm really, uh, getting used to it now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, so how, um, so can you uh, walk us through of what it's like to live with your uh, spina bifida? Uh, I probably said that wrong, but it's it's a hard word. It, it looks like there's extra letters in there, so um, no problem. <laughs> but uh, with spina bifida, it's really for just like every diagnosis, every person diagnosed with spina bifida is different. So in my case, as I mentioned, I can walk with leg braces. Uh, and crutches, and then I also use a wheelchair. There are some people who uh, are diagnosed with spina bifida who are unable to walk at all. They have to um, be full-time wheelchair users. Um, so for me, it really just impacts my my leg muscles. So without my braces on, I have to crawl around or use my chair. I have a chair that I keep in the house. Um, but without my braces on, I can't put any pressure on my legs. And that's really the... Um, the main way that the spina bifida impacts me on a daily basis. Like there, of course, I, I have some kind of discomfort in my back area or my legs. Um, but most of the time it is, uh, for me, it's manageable. I can keep going and, and go about my day without it impacting me, um, you know, without it impacting me too much, uh, where it, it doesn't keep me in bed too often is what I guess I'm trying to say. Uh, but I drive a car. I live in a, an apartment by myself. I love to cook. Um, I also love to go out and um, I go to the wineries and I've done a few outdoor dining things. Uh, you know, in the last few months, I love hanging out with friends. So it's really um, spina bifida. It, it, it's a part of my life, but thankfully it does not take up all of my life. And I'm not really... Um, not held down too much by it, which uh, some days it, it can be a struggle. I, I won't lie about that. And some days I do stay in the house and, uh, you know, want to lay in bed for that extra hour. <laughs> but uh, most of the time it, it's pretty manageable for me where I can just keep uh, keep going through, pushing through all of the discomfort and, and pain that I might feel uh, because of it. Ah, well, I don't know if I shared this with you on my uh, on the podcast that I was episode that I was with you, but uh, I have spinal stenosis in my neck and the uh, very top part, and so I'm not it, like it it can get worse. Um, uh, thank, thankfully, it's not worse. Um, it just been uh, it has stayed the same. For since the day I was born, and uh, and I, I can appreciate. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I think well, I think it was when I first met you. I think it was. Um, I'm just looking for the right words because it's going to probably sound very weird. Uh, but uh, what I what I liked what I I was. I'm, I was glad to connect with you because um, I didn't know that there was another person out there who uh, had another neck issue, sort of like, I, I wouldn't even say it's sort of like me, but I mean, just another person who has to be 
careful with their neck and and whatnot. And I know that sounds so awkward in that sentence, and none of that should have even be formed no, in that sentence. <laughs> no, I remember. I remember during our conversation uh, on my podcast episode, we did talk about your spinal stenosis and how you have to be careful how you move your neck. And because also you're into um, the fitness world and, and um, working out and moving and being active, that you had to be careful with how you moved your neck. And I expressed the same thing because of my uh, spinal cord not being too... Um, sturdy and to <laughs> I have to be careful as well and I also have a shunt in my head um, that circulates the cerebrospinal fluid from my brain throughout my body so I have to be careful too because if I damage that that can cause some some serious um, issues so um, yeah so I, I definitely uh, remember that part of our conversation for sure <laughs> Well, yeah, I always uh, tell my parents, it's like, if there was a very smart person out there that could come up with some surgery that was like 99.9% .9 successful, I would do it. Because, uh, because I'm not saying like it bothers me, but there's some nights where like some, day, uh, some days when I wake up the next day and my neck is just just extra stiff, and and I know it's nothing serious because I haven't lost the feeling in my fingers or whatnot. Because the, uh -huh. the, uh, the doctors told me it's like if you uh, if something was truly wrong with your uh, neck, you would you, you would lose uh, like either you would feel numb all over and whatnot. I just I just, my neck is just extra stiff because I slept on it wrong and whatnot. So. As long as I can still move my neck and everything else, like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but it, it is like you know, I I saw this one movie. Uh, oh, what was it? Oh no, I think it was Hobbs and Shaw. And this guy had like a metal neck, and I know this is only in the movies. It's like, can I get a 360 degree neck like that, please? <laughs> <laughs> and like that would really freak out people come to my house on Halloween. It's like, hey, you want to send something cool? And then my head would just spin just around. Turn your head all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, ah! It's like, uh, oh, gosh, that would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, do you ever feel like? Um, that your days, uh, does it feel like, does it ever, do you ever feel like it, that you, that you wish that this was a curable thing? Ah, that's always a interesting question. Um, so as I mentioned, I was born in 1981. My parents did not know I had spina bifida until I was born. And now they have what is, um, they have 3D ultrasounds where you can actually see that the um, spinal cord is not forming properly and that the baby, before the baby is born, you can see that the baby will have spina bifida. And then they also have a surgery that's called the fetal surgery where they remove the baby from the mother's stomach before the baby is born, before the due date. They close the hole in the baby's back and it is, um, a fairly new surgery. I think they've been doing it for, I want to say close to 20 years now or so. Um, they do it at a few hospitals across the country. Uh, one of them being a uh, children's hospital in Philadelphia, which is where all of my care was uh, when I was a young infant and a, through my early adulthood, actually. Um, so I, while I am grateful that they have made these medical advances and they have, um, created this, uh, this procedure for families and they are, you know, providing better lives for those children that are now born with spina bifida. For me, if they were to say, hey, as a 39 year old, you can go in and have the surgery and you'll be able to, you know, be cured, whatever that would look like. If it was, you know, you wouldn't have to wear the braces, you wouldn't have to use the crutches or the wheelchair. I probably would not, um, I probably would not go for it just because um, 
in my life, I've been able to reach a lot of people um, sharing my story and through opportunities more recently like this one, allowing me to share my story on your platform and other uh, podcasts and other interviews that I've done. Um, I, I think my, like for me, my, my life, the way it has been, although, as I said, I, I have had some rough setbacks and surgeries and things that didn't go so well because of my disability. Um, for me, my life is just how it's supposed to be, I think, is, um, is how I feel. And I feel like this, uh, this diagnosis was um, for a reason. I am still working toward finding that total reason, but every day or so, um, I, you know, I, I get closer to realizing what it is and what it's all about. And it has allowed me to, um, the job I mentioned working with the nonprofit that builds inclusive playgrounds, uh, you know, I, there's no way of knowing, of course, but because of my disability, a friend of mine told me about that uh, organization. So, you know, I, I like to think if I didn't have a disability, it might not have been something that my friend related to tell me. Uh, so, you know, I, I feel like everything, my dad always said that everything happens for a reason. So, um, you know, I like to think that this uh, spina bifida diagnosis happened for a reason for me. <laughs> I, I can relate a little bit. Uh, I can agree with that a little bit uh, for myself. Um, if there was a way to cure autism, I wouldn't do it because uh, it's who I am. It's part of my DNA. It makes mm -hmm. me who I am. And I, like you, I believe that I feel like I don't think I ever would be able to be where I am today without it. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, who would think I would be featured in New York City Times Square? Uh, uh, being autistic, right? Not me. Uh, right. I, I mean, I was like, I, I'm glad I got the opportunity. I was, I was able to be in the right place at the right time, and I was able to be there. But I, I never thought, like, oh wow, my name was on the uh, was on the billboard. It's like, gee, you had to pay a boatload of money for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, and and the other thing is, I. Again, I, I don't know how many times I've already said it, and I'll probably say it 20 more times during this uh, conversation, but what I just said as a 39-year-old, if you would have asked me as a 20-year-old, my answer might have been a little different. <laughs> or if you asked me as a teenager, my answer most likely would have been really different because, you know, as a, a teenager, as a child and a teenager and a young adult, you kind of get left out of a lot of things that you can't do, um, or I, I'll say I was. And not by everybody, there were, there were, and there still are many people who include me in things. Um, but, you know, as a child, you can't play sports. I couldn't play sports as, you know, on the football team or play baseball like uh, my typically developing friends um, were uh, able to do. But so if, if you were to ask me, oh, we could cure you and, and make you walk without braces and crutches, as a teenager, I might have said yes, <laughs> just because I know it would have allowed me to do more activities with uh, with my friends. But, you know, you're, like I said, you're talking to a 39-year-old a, a who I have found my group of people who accept me and people who include me in things and invite me to things. Um, to participate. So like now I'm pretty comfortable. I know how to manage myself and my life and, um, you know, fairly, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty damn happy with, uh, the way that I'm living life. So, uh, no, I, I wouldn't change it now, but 20 years ago, 25 years ago, if you were to ask me, I might've said yes. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> uh, like, I think the, the the only thing that I would change would just be the spinal stenosis because it, it would make my I would say my it would make my life a, a little bit easier, but it, it would make it a little bit easier of driving because of just viewing stuff in the like turning my neck in this way and that way just to see cars coming and everything coming out of a parking lot. 
gets tiring yeah. after a while for my neck. So mm -hmm. it's like, I'll, I'll keep the inward pointing knees. I'll keep the autism, but maybe I could live out with, without the spinal stenosis just a little bit. And yes. it's like, I'll, I'll take it the two out of three. Yes, I, I can agree with that where I would say if I could get rid of the pain and discomfort that I feel without having to use, you know, medication that causes, you know, to me to be addicted to things. Uh, if there was a way to do that, which I'm sure there is, uh, just have to do a lot of research to find it. But um, yeah, I could, uh, I could do without the, the constant discomfort that I feel. But uh, I, I feel like our, um, our life is, you know, someone told me the other day, our life is um, the total of the things that have happened to us. So, you know, my life is a bunch of bits and pieces of uh, good things, not so good things, just like everybody else. So, um, but they are all things that have come together to shape me into who I am uh, today. So that's the good thing. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, well, what do you like to educate people on with spina bifida? bifida? Uh. So, um, so what I what I do through my company, Our View, which um, I started in 2010, where I uh, typically would go to schools and I would visit schools uh, from elementary school all the way through the college level, and uh, I would talk about my story of living with spina bifida and what that means. And then I also, um, I, I don't live with any other disability diagnosis, but I would um, educate the students on other types of disabilities like uh, being deaf or hard of hearing and visually impaired or being blind and um, topics, I would address topics like autism. And then for the school age children, I primarily focused on the, um, I guess it would be called like accepting people who are different and, you know, accepting all differences and uh, including those who have disabilities and just um, the anti-bullying uh, piece of that. So bullying has been a, a topic in schools for, for decades, if not centuries, I'm sure it has gone on since the beginning of time. Um, but more recently, and especially here in New Jersey, I know there are uh, strict anti-bullying laws in schools. Uh, so I would relate the uh, disability, having a disability and people being different to um, just accepting everybody who, who is different. For the older students in high school and college, I would focus on things like accessibility and inclusion where yeah, you know, I always said, I don't know whose child I may be talking to. I may be talking to a student whose uh, parent works in the airline industry. And that might start a conversation when they go home. If their dad is a, a pilot or um, a flight attendant, they may say like, hey, like, how do you handle, how do you work with people who have disabilities that come on your plane? And, you know, they may start a discussion of how to make things um, in the airline industry more inclusive. Or for college students and, and high school students as well, I don't know who may be um, planning a, uh, a career in like hotel management and how that might start their brain moving and saying like, okay, if I'm going to be working in hospitality, how can I make things more inclusive, make things more accessible for the guests who will be coming in uh, who have disabilities? I had a perfect example of this uh, two weeks ago. I went to, um, I went to a wedding and I stayed at a hotel and I reserved an accessible room because again, I'm a wheelchair user. I got to the hotel and they told me all of their accessible rooms are under renovation. No email, no phone call beforehand when I showed up. Thankfully the hotel was, you know, an hour and a half from my house. Uh, so I didn't fly in from the a suite, please. Yeah. So it's like, what do I do? What do I, what, how do I handle the situation? Of course, I want it to flip all the way out about it, but it's just kind of like, how can I use this as an educational moment, but also let them know that I am really pissed off about it. Um, so it, it's, it's just a thing of 
educating people, not just about spina bifida, but also about other types of disabilities and how just making the smallest changes to some things can be, um, make the biggest impact on those customers and um, clients and whoever else they may be interacting with who have disabilities. That is what my real goal is, along with just generally changing the tone of conversation about disabilities. Don't see things like spina bifida or autism or being deaf or hard of hearing or visually impaired or blind. Don't see those things as negatives. Figure out how we can all live together because you know, I, like I said, I live in my apartment and you live where you live. We go out, we do things, we shop, we have to buy food, we have to eat. So people with autism, people with spina bifida are in your communities. They're visiting your stores, your malls, your supermarket grocery stores. And um, we have to figure out how we can effectively um, incorporate things and include, make things more inclusive and more accessible uh, for those who have disabilities. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, like, for instance, uh, when you were, uh, like, that hotel uh, incident, it, uh, I think if I was in your shoes, I would probably would say, as a, give me a, your, the, the house suite on the very, very top floor, uh, and like, everything inclusive, please. Right. Yeah, it's, it's and, and the, the crazy and sad thing is that's just one example of the many things that I could talk about where I've run into situations that um, the list goes that on. were not that. Yeah, that were not accessible. You know, being in New York City, the greatest city in the world, it's a great place. I miss going to New York City. Um, but being in Penn Station, a very busy um, train station and an elevator not working. So I can't get down to the train that leaves on track two because the elevator's not working. So I have to wait another hour and a half to up to two or three hours sometimes for the next train to come back. <laughs> and it's just like, how how does this happen? You know, and I get it, things happen, at, but why, why isn't somebody on standby to fix things like right away? And it, it's just, um, you know, like I said, the list the list can go on and on about the uh, the many many things that I uh, experience. So just to um, to bring it back to my hour view company, it's just the making people aware that, like I said, that people with disabilities exist. We live very active lives, and I think for me i i know i would live a very more active life if i knew things were more accessible for me as a wheelchair user or somebody who uses crutches but you still don't know if um you know you still don't know if you go out somewhere if someplace will be fully accessible to you so sometimes that um prohibits people from uh, wanting to venture out and and do things so it's really uh things have come a long way but they definitely need to uh, have a long way to go to uh, continue to get better. <laughs> so uh, could you uh, name a few things that need to be more accessible? Like what would make it more easy to find out that information? Well, one of one of the big things that I always um, that I always like to mention. So there is the Americans with Disabilities Act, which um, I think that needs to be updated to include more specific uh, information because, for example, the Americans with Disabilities Act says that um, buildings have to have an accessible entrance. It does not specify that it has to be the front entrance or the main entrance. So that does mean a restaurant or any other building who has a ramp in the back of their building for delivery say because it's easier for them to pull the hand truck up a ramp they get away with having an accessible entrance me as a person with a disability and especially a person with a disability who is a person of color should not have to enter through your back door just to you know and especially if it's a restaurant going through your kitchen to get to the main dining room when everybody else can enter through the front door, but your front door has two or three steps to get inside. So it, it's like, that's one of the 
uh, one of my really big pet peeves where it's just, um, so legally they're not breaking the law because they have an accessible entrance because that's all it says that they have to have and they do. So they're not breaking the law, but they don't, at the same time, they don't, um, they don't think more of their customers who have disabilities to say like, oh, that might be a little bit degrading for them to enter through the back entrance or through the kitchen. Like that's, <laughs> um, well, it won't be the it won't be the first time the uh, it won't be the first time that uh, something is very wordy when it was written like years ago. Like I, I, I kid you not. Like uh, some of my friends know this, but I applied to get my trademark uh, for Crazy Fitness Guy. Mm -hmm. Fine, it's I'll, I'll give them that. Uh, it's due to COVID and whatnot. It's taken longer, but 16 months, really? That, that sounds like a really great scam. Here, you give me a thousand bucks. We'll <laughs> sit on it for you and uh, and whatnot. And I'm like, wow, what a great idea. But but like, uh, like I agree, and I'll tie in with your example. Well, of course, I got, a few mis things mis uh, mistakenly during the trademark law and people can still use part of crazy fitness guy and certain and certain things but like but they cover by different classes so uh like i uh, talk about uh fitness and autism so as long as no one is using crazy fitness guy with fitness discussing uh, autism and fitness they're not infringing upon my mark but they mm -hmm. start infringing upon my mark and this is my point i think this i think this is uh, this is out of my context so my lawyer probably would say much better than i am because i'm not a lawyer uh, by mm -hmm. any means but uh he uh, you know, basically somebody can still use crazy fitness guy but they just can say discuss uh autism like fitness with autism and whatnot only me and uh -huh. so but it was, but i was just like so that's a really really confusing law and it's like so 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 there can be so many duplicates of crazy fitness guy out there and so many different variants but right. only there, i was like that's a stupid and like for the amount of um for the amount of time it takes us to get a mark, gee, I should just be able to keep the freaking name. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, I'm really confused. This is like, I was like, no wonder why the big cluster. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say the last word on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So things things definitely need to be um, things definitely need to be updated with that uh, Americans with Disabilities oh. Act for sure. And a lot of things. And the, the issue I have is the Americans with Disabilities Act is not that old. It's like, it was created within my lifetime. So um, the fact, yeah, it was it was created 30, I think 31 years ago. Um, so it's, it's not, you know, it's not that old. And the fact that um, They're just letting it get old. The, the fact that it wasn't thought about that language like that to just give a general thing of, oh, it has to be an accessible entrance. But it can be around the side of your building, around the back of your building. Um, it could be on top of your building. Yeah, it could be anywhere. It's, it's as long as it's accessible and it's, you know, that's that's the issue. That's one of my, my big issues that I have with... Um, with that as well, and working in the um, in the playground world with uh, the nonprofit I work for, uh, another thing that the Americans with Disabilities Act says is that it has to uh, for playgrounds it has to have an accessible pathway to the playground. It says nothing about being accessible to play on the playground. So that's why a lot of your playgrounds still have mulch as surfacing or uh, gravel that has surfacing. Um, and that's not accessible for people with wheel wheelchairs or walkers. Um, you know, it, it can be very difficult for people who are visually impaired. And it's, it's just, um, you know, people with certain um, 
certain disorders like to eat mulch and things like that as well. So that's not safe. Um, so it, it's really, um, you know, it, it's, and play is a very big thing for children. So to, to, you're really excluding a large population of, uh, children with disabilities by not having inclusive playgrounds. And it's something that a lot of, again, a lot of people don't think about. We have been, um, talking about, I've, I've been working with them for almost 10 years. I started as a volunteer in, I think in 2010 or 2011, I think it was. But um, we've heard conversations and people say, well, you never, you know, why build a playground for kids with disabilities? You don't see kids with disabilities on playgrounds because they can't get to them because of the mulch, because of the gravel, the, the surfacing is not accessible for them. So that's why we're building and, and our playgrounds are not just for kids with disabilities. Everybody of every ability, as we say, can play on these playgrounds. They're so they're meant to be inclusive of everybody. So children with and without disabilities can play on them. And then it also helps out grandparents who are taking their grandkids to the playground. So it has a, a rubberized surfacing. So if the grandparent who may be a little older in age, if they fall, you know, there's, it's, it's very unlikely that they would get hurt. So it, it's, um, you know, so the playgrounds that we, that we build are not just for, uh, for children, but they're really for, you know, the whole, the whole family to enjoy. And for, again, people with and without disabilities. I think you guys need to start building all your uh, built and playgrounds in Pennsylvania because, uh, because I remember, uh, my elementary school that I went to, uh -huh. and they used wood chips. They used, uh, I think they, I think they even used mulch as well. Uh -huh. uh, and, and there's even like parks around here that did the same exact thing. And yeah, you know, I never. I think you got. I think you gave me a really great eye opener uh, to some of these things because, um, yes. To be honest, I I thought like oh you know I thought maybe everybody could be accessible to that, but I I don't know because I'm not in a wheelchair for uh, going near playgrounds. I never thought of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm not saying like why would I? Because uh, uh, it's not like it came to my mind. But I was like. Well, now you can't. When you mentioned that, I was like, just think of uh, all the playgrounds I've been to. I was like, right. Well, oh, now I can see why. Yeah, and um, that's what happens though, because if you know, a lot of times, and it's not just for people with with or without disabilities. If we're not directly impacted by something, it doesn't cross our mind. It's just that's just how our minds work. If if it doesn't impact me then I, you know, you don't naturally think about that, um, you know, as, and especially as a, a kid playing on the playground, you don't think of, you know, why aren't there kids with disabilities on this playground? You, you don't think about that. You're just worrying and uh, happy that well, you can enjoy the playground. <laughs> well, but think about it though, but here's, here's something else that people need to think about. Wood chips are not very great to uh, play on. Uh, it's still wood. You can get splinters. You can still right. cut yourself on it. And it's like, why not a nice rubber mat underneath it? Or right. uh, not even a mat, but like, I don't know. Uh, you could get some, um, I don't know, some uh, foam squares for probably less than what it costs, uh, probably for less than uh, mulch. and. And yeah, there you? are many ways. There are many ways that you can um, make that, you know, make these spaces in, inclusive of uh, for people with disabilities. So it's, um, again, things have improved. Things have come a very long way um, and they still have a long way to go. So it's really, um, really important that, uh, you know, that you're doing the work that you're doing to get uh you know, to get people's stories out there and, you know, and myself and others who have platforms like podcast or uh, that are doing live streams uh, that allow people to tell their stories and to share their experiences of, um, you know, of living with, with a disability. And it's, it's truly, 
something that I've been very glad and happy to see over the last year of more and more people um, sharing their stories, more people with disabilities. And uh, I've mentioned it on my podcast. There's uh, the social media app called Clubhouse where you can um, go into different rooms and it's, it's pretty much like a giant uh, podcast where you use your voice, you literally talk in different rooms. And there are so many rooms in uh, on Clubhouse that uh, address topics related to disabilities. And they're addressing it in many, many different ways, including um, their TV and film executives that are uh, on Clubhouse and they're trying to hear people's stories and get ideas of how things can be uh, more accessible and how they can uh, hire people who have disabilities and uh, in the film crew and the um, as actors for their shows, for their movies. There's been a lot of talks um, in the last few weeks about, um, last few months, I would say, about uh, Crip Camp, which was a, a, um, a, a nominated for an Oscar this year. And also the, um, uh, what's the movie called? The Sound of Metal which is um, a movie about a drummer who is losing his hearing and he goes to a rehab for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. So there are, um, again, things, things have come a long way. You're seeing more people, uh, more actors and actresses with disabilities in movies and you're seeing more movies and TV shows that include actors and topics related to disabilities. Uh, I know there was a show, a sitcom on a couple of years ago called Speechless. And, um, you know, so it's, it's really good to see that because as a person with living with a disability, it's, it's nice to see people who look like you, who have um, similar diagnosis to you. I know um, the show that's on The Good Doctor, his, uh, the main character on that show has autism. Um, so it's, it's really nice to see that these, uh, storylines are being created and, um, you know, people are, I think they can do better, but they are doing their best, I think, to, uh, either hire actors and actresses that actually have these diagnoses, or they are working closely with a group of consultants who, um, who know what it's like to be a wheelchair user or to have autism so they can, um, uh, you know, make these storylines as authentic as um, as possible. Definitely. And uh, so uh, before we wrap up, uh, where can people follow you? All right. So they can follow me um, just about everywhere on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at Our View for Life. Um, O-U-R-V-I-E-W, the number four, L-I-F-E. And um, on Clubhouse, I'm just at Our View. So, um, you know, I'm pretty active on Instagram and Facebook and on Clubhouse. I, I go into a lot of rooms um, on Clubhouse in the, um, in the evenings, in the nighttime hours. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I'm uh, very active there. So give me a follow and um, I'm always looking for new podcast guests. So uh, send me a DM and, and we can uh, talk. <laughs> and uh, yeah, before we, uh, we wrap up, you know, but I, I just wanted to say, um, you, you know, I really and I, I honestly like when I uh, when I was first on your uh, uh, podcast, I th I think it was like um, I had to say it was like the it was really uh, I was glad to be able to meet you because it's you don't to me um you don't let it don't you don't let your uh extra challenge get in the way of your life like like me uh i always appreciate uh that i uh that uh we don't let these things get in the way like i could easily like um let my spinal stenosis get in the way of my life and say oh well that seems uh dangerous to go out uh, I might as well wrap myself in bubble wrap um, uh, even that probably doesn't uh, protect me at, at all um, or a big styrofoam thing no that doesn't sound right either uh, 
I, I think I could list like every single material and it's probably still wouldn't do very well. May just wrap me up in all of that together and that probably still won't work very well. But uh, <laughs> but but I, I definitely think that uh, you're one of those people like me who don't like let it define us who we are. Uh, and it's like, yeah, I have spinal stenosis. Yes, we have to be careful. But, you know, at the end of the day, we still have lives. Uh, we don't let it get in the way of our lives. We have, and it's like, yeah, sure, I can't do certain moves in, um, for exercises uh, in karate, uh, like this one called, uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, you know, none of that name's going to come back to kick me later, but, uh, uh, oh, hyperextensions. Yeah, oh, yes. I can do that. And, uh, and it's not because of my, it's in my lower back, it's it's all the way up here. As it feels like a nice knob in my neck. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just, it's like, I'm okay not doing that move. Um, and none of my uh i i told all my uh i told my sensei i told my uh joshis and senpais that i just can't do that move i i'll do everything else i just can't do that because uh, right yeah, yeah that's so the thing we know you know we know our limitations and um it, again i've done some things that again that i probably shouldn't have done i i used to love roller coasters and that might not have been the safest thing for me to be on with the twisting and the turning, but I liked it. It was fun. Um, and then there are things that like, of course, like back, back when I, like I said, when I was younger, it might've looked, um, you know, it might've been a bit sad for me to not be included. Like I couldn't play football, but like looking at it now, it's just like, no, like why would I want to be bumped around and knocked around like that on a football field. Like that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm okay that I missed out on stuff like, like that. And, and just, um, again, not every day is good for me and I'm sure not every day is good for you. And, you know, we get uncomfortable, we have some pain and discomfort, but to just keep going, to allow yourself first, most importantly, always allow yourself to have those moments and those down days. If it's, you know, if it's just hurting and you're not comfortable, then, Hey, it, it is what it is, but it's just um, to not stay there too long is what I like to say. And, and like to tell people, you know, it's okay to have your moment, have your day or two, but don't stay there too long and just um, keep moving and, and just literally keep moving, stay active. And that, um, that always helps uh, with me as well. If I notice that things are tightening up too much, it's because I haven't been outside or I haven't moved around. I haven't had my braces on in a couple of days. So just literally keep moving. <laughs> that uh, can make a world of difference for uh, for me, I, I know for sure. Oh, was that one commercial, the body in motion stays in motion? Yes, that's right. That's uh, right. Hopefully that doesn't become copyright. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Right. I'll <laughs> just act like that was instead. <laughs> but it's it's true. It is very true. <laughs> hey, I, technically I gave them credit. I said a commercial. I had to forget which commercial. You but... did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> Lucky I remember that slogan. I don't remember the... <laughs> But that's a good. That's a sign of a good slogan. You remembered it. That's <laughs> yeah. Crap. I remember all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, but it was really great to have you on and let's stay in touch and uh, 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 when we wrap up this episode if you could stay a little bit behind as, uh, before uh, we both exit so uh, because I wanted to ask you a question before you leave so yes. uh, okay so let me just wrap up the show and I'll be with you in a second all right <laughs> Thank well, you. thanks again for being on uh, Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Living Podcast slash weekly live stream. And uh, if you ever want to come back on the show, you're um, more than welcome at any time. Uh, just let me know and I'll get you set up. Thank you so much. I had a great time. It wasn't um, 
it wasn't so far out of my comfort zone. I really enjoyed myself and always uh, great to talk to you. And of course, we'll stay in touch. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, uh, and maybe next time it'll be even like even more comfortable for you. <laughs> Yes, yes. The more I the more I do it, the more comfortable I get for sure. <laughs> Man, I've only been on sixty nine different podcasts and you had the first I think to be honest, the first twenty I was nervous, but then I, it just started coming to me like I can tell the story like in the back of my mind. Right. <laughs> I even started mixing up with some of the stories just to uh just to keep uh everything interesting. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do something you gotta do whatever that's right <laughs> well uh thanks again and i'll be right with you in, in a few minutes all right thank you <laughs> so that is today's episode if you like this episode please leave us a review and uh, subscribe to our youtube channel twitch channel and on daily motion i'll put that on the screen real quick and you can also follow crazy fitness guy on facebook twitter and instagram uh just at crazy fitness guy uh i'm lucky i i snagged the original no numbers um and you can follow me uh jimmy claire speaker on twitter i mean on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter uh, at Jimmy Claire Speak. And you, again, you can listen to this uh, on Apple, Google, and Spotify, and every major podcast platform out there. And last but not least, you can follow author again at Our View for Life on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and at Our View on Clubhouse. So that's it for today. And until next time, uh, I want to just, uh, until next time, I'll, uh, which will be next week, uh, uh, stay crazy and stay safe. And I'll see you back here again next Friday at 1 p.m. the same time, Eastern time. And I don't mean Eastern time in another country. I mean Eastern time in the United States. Apparently, there's multiple Eastern time zones. Can we all be on the same page? And we need one consistent time zone across the whole world because that would be really lovely. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I digress. And uh, I'll see you soon. Stay crazy. Stay safe. And have a good rest of your day. And I'll catch you back here next time.